we have a good team. We got a good players. We've had some, some the continuity of the group. We've had guys step up any given game. It could be another guy like tonight. It was AG stepped up and gave us good minutes. Um, we're healthy. I mean, I, we, we have a good team. We just, I mean, we've had a lot of stuff go on. And I think the, the biggest thing, we just stayed with it. We still got nine games to go. And we're going to keep playing how we, how we play. Every game, every day is important. And, but I think it seems like every night somebody's stepping up. I mean, Brad did not have a good offensive game. Everybody chipped away. Gaff came in and gave us good minutes. Ish came in and gave us good minutes. How I thought even DV's third quarter, he made a couple of threes that gave us a, a spark in that run. And then Ish came in and, and played well throughout the game. But it seems like during this last month, month and a half that we've been playing, playing good, but, and then out of nowhere guy would surface in any given game. And that's, that's when you, I have confidence in all the guys. That's how I tell the guys, be ready. You know, be ready. It's been lately. It's been in AG. He hasn't played all year, but he's been ready and he's stepped up. That's what you want. That's what you want. They put a lot of work in. He puts a lot of work in with all of our assistants. Zach. Coach, you had Davis start the second half there. Just Clearly, uh, it worked, so good good job by you. But uh, what went into that decision? Well, I need, we needed to get him going. I thought I thought we missed him about four or five times. And, you know, he's a, he's a shooter. He wants to get – he wants to get those shots to uh, – he wants to get those shots so he can help the team, you know, move the scoreboard. But that wasn't the reason um, why we, we – we, we just needed a spark. I just felt that we needed a spark. And – I just I was hoping that he would get some more looks and and then how also had the three fouls and that's just a that's the luxury when you have a, a bunch of good players on the team and guys have to be able to really step up and then how came in and had had his probably his best uh, quarter that he's had all year he was just aggressive and they've been telling him you're one of our better shooters you see we don't get a lot of three point attempts and we need three to six or seven or eight from you. And I think he's he's realizing that that he has a coach that believes in his in his abilities, and he has to just you know let it go and play with that that type of force. And I th thought he did in that second half as well. So it helped both DB and and Hau. Ava. Speaking of um, how will you guys talk a lot about how much Russell's just like general the way he plays and the way he is uh, affects the team is there a little bit of the same case with how it just seems like he's a, a total bruiser how does his kind of approach to the game um affect you guys at all yeah it just is consistent uh scrappiness he's just out there he scraps he just he just he, he grinds and and plays every possession with a pure heart and he just competes very rarely you get anything out of him um just even if he does get a, a tough call against them, he'll show a little bit of frustration, but he's always, he just has that, that tough mindset of next play. And he gives us a really, I mean, Russell allows us to play with three guards because Russell can rebound. I don't even know, what is he like seventh in the league or eighth in the league in rebounds and all the guys above him are centers. So Russell allows us to play with three smaller players and it works. How does a great job of driving and kicking, and you know he has usually a not the best, uh, the the worst of the of the three defenders that has to make a decision on to guard him. But he's he's consistent. Love the guy. His teammates love him. They love him. They love him because um, he competes every day. He doesn't change. He's the same demeanor, game in, game out. And then you talked a little bit about it before game, but just with the schedule coming up and the back-to-back -back tomorrow, how big was it to get those guys uh, rest in the fourth tonight? Well, it was good. It was good. But, I, I, you know, going into the game, I was really just focused on this. I know I know we have a game and a, a tough travel tomorrow night and a, and a very good team that's – they're fighting for their position in the playoffs like we are. Um, but they also the – I always, always have a good feel about our back-to-backs. One, 
Brad and Russell always play well in back to back. It doesn't really matter how many minutes they have the first night. So that wasn't really a concern, but it is nice that they both had, you know, 31 and I think Brad had well, 30, 26. Cause it's definitely tomorrow night. It's going to be a, a, a tough match, but be good for us. We're looking forward to it. Neil. Hey, Scott, this isn't the first time that you said, you know, you think Russ and Brad played really well in back-to-backs. What do you think about them makes them so effective in, you know, seemingly a situation that's not as ideal? Well, they, they don't they don't have that excuse bone that, that some players have. You know, it's, it's easy to find it. There's a lot. Travel, uh, body hurts. I got things I got to deal with. Off the court, I have a cold. Uh, coach is not playing me. I'm not getting shots. There's always excuses that you can use, but those two guys don't. They don't use excuses. They just keep. They're out there. They lead. And if you if you're gonna have if you're gonna have a chance to win in back to backs, and if your two best players aren't buying into back to backs, and 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 you're not gonna have a chance. And, and we, I, I know, I've coached Russell when the shortened season back. I don't even know what year it was when we had like five games in like six nights or seven nights. And that last night, I wasn't even worried about the fifth night. We had three games in a row. He's, he's like I, I've said many times, that, that, that young man is different in a way that I love. All right, last question, Zach. Coach, Russ is four away now from tying the record. I know you're, you're pretty aware of it, but to see him go on this tear, which is like, I think his best triple double efficiency, if you call it that, of his career. Like how wild is it to see it at age 32 at this point? It's a, it's one of the, I'm, it's really awesome. I mean, there's no, I, I can't even think of any other words other than it is pretty cool to see him, what he does, how he leads us off the court, on the court, in the locker room, in the hotel, on the bus. He's just, he's just been terrific for our organization. I cannot, I cannot be more happier for him and his family. He's earned, earned this and I don't, I'm hoping that he w- does get it. I'm sure it's going to be incredible. That's, it's a record that nobody, I would have never thought it would be broken, especially by a point guard that's six, three. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. I mean, only thing, I'm the only person that can prevent that from happening, I guess. He's that good. So. Ish, you've been on um, such a tear recently. When we talked to Davis after he came back from his calf strain, he said it actually was, was a little nice to have the rehab time and kind of take a load off for a little bit. I know your injury was maybe a little bit more gnarly. You took a lot more time off. How are your legs feeling? Do you feel like you're kind of rested coming into the home stretch here? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I feel so much better, uh, but uh, I think everybody's banged up right about now. There's no excuses. Uh, the rest, you know, wasn't what you wanted because you were hurt. Uh, and sometimes when you rehab it, I think it's harder than, you know, when you actually kind of in it because you get a little frustrated uh, because you got extra stuff you got to do in this rehab, 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 so you can get back out there. But uh, now I feel good. My legs feel good. Um, uh, but for the most part, like, you can't kind of think about it now. You just got to keep going and going because, uh, uh, you know, we're playing for something bigger. And we got to keep going. So uh, uh, my legs feel, I guess, they, they feel all right. I do all the normal tech and all the extra stuff I need to do. So uh, it's, a, it's a race, you know, it's a marathon, you know, and it's a sprint to the finish right now. So uh, you can't really think about it. Uh, and just with the stretch that you guys have been on in general, what's – I guess, is there one thing that you point to above all else that's kind of fueling this uh, this run here you guys are having? Uh, I think it's defense. That's just my opinion. <clears throat> I think we're all talented and all can score. Uh, you know, knock down shots when we open. Uh, we can make plays. We, we all have that capability. I think all 450 guys can, you know, in the league. But especially our team, I think we're capable of really scoring some points. Uh, but I think what we've been doing is defending. Uh, we kind of took a little bit of a step back against San Antonio, uh, even though they are really, really good offensive team. And uh, so are we. Uh, it was more of a shootout. But uh, tonight in uh, the Lakers game, we got back to uh, just defending. And the rest of it kind of, you know, works itself out. Uh, but, we, but we defended 
uh, tonight and we got to do the same thing again to, uh, tomorrow night against Dallas. Sorry, if I can, Ish, you guys have talked about defense for so many years. Like what Scott will talk about, like the little tweaks that he's made and everything like that. But how did you guys, it, it seems like a sudden improvement from our end. But what, what do you feel like was the reason for that? I just honestly think uh, it's a sense of urgency. And then I think it's just guarding your yard. Uh, Coach always says that, like, just uh, taking that pride, uh, taking it to uh, when we were younger, you just kind of play and pick up one-on-one, -on -one, just guarding your guy and uh, taking more pride in defense, taking more, you know, pride in obviously the defensive schemes, but more pride in just guarding uh, and keeping guys in front of you, uh, not making them shoot over you, and then rebounding and we're out. Uh, we got the best. Um, rebounding guard in the history of the NBA. And then you add that on uh, Gaff and, and Rolo and, and, you know, Alex and all our fours and AG and, and the list goes on who can really rebound. And, and then, you know, me and I will stick our nose in there and try to rebound. And Brad's a great rebounder in his position. But when you defend and you can rebound, then that's the way we really want to play and get out and run. So we'll be tested tomorrow, but I think we'll be ready. Fred. Hey, Ish, just, just speaking of your legs, how long did the ice down process on your knees take after that dunk? Yo, uh, honestly, uh, I felt, I listen, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what I was doing. I just caught the ball and dunked it. And then when I dunked it, I was like, uh, oh, I dunked it. And then everybody was going crazy. And, and then everybody's like, man, you ain't had a dunk since 2017, 18, which that year I think I had a, I think I had like 10 dunks that year, if I'm not mistaken. It was in Detroit, uh, <clears throat> the, the middle year in Detroit, uh, the three years I was there. So um, now my legs feel fine. Uh, tonight, I'm a normal take, do some things, get ready for a back-to-back. -back. So uh, my legs feel fine. Well, you can you can dunk four years from now again. You'll make it a, I know, make it a tradition. Make it a, a four-year thing every four years. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm, I'm also curious to get your perspective because you've known Russell for such a long time. Uh, he's closing in on... Oscar Robertson's triple double record. He's he's four away from tying him, and uh, he got one tonight. Guys, right? He got one tonight. Uh, and you, when you guys were teammates in Oklahoma City, even like six years ago, this was like he's had so many in the last six years that this is just a totally. It was still distant six years ago. It wasn't even a thing people thought about. Did did you? When did you realize like man, this this start to look at Russell in this light as somebody who could just do this? every night. I tell him this all the time. I'm gonna tell you on a little secret. I tell him, I say he's made differently. He just really is. Um, Russ gives you 120, 130%, 150%, 200% every single night on the defensive end, offensive end, rebounding, uh, every aspect of the game. And um, the thing that I love about him is, it's just basically like, it's like a, a game of wheels for him. I'm gonna outlast you. Uh, and so I think the year <clears throat> when KD went on to go to state and he had that team by himself and he was just, he was special that year. That was his MVP year. And it was just triple, double, triple, double, triple, double. That's when I was like, yo, this is possible. This is, this is really, really possible. And um, so, and the beautiful thing about it is his triple doubles. Um, they come in wins, you know, a lot of people, you know, you know, people think whatever they think or whatever they feel. Uh, when you look at the win percentages, when he gets those triple doubles, we win, and, and he's got a winning record in, in doing that. So uh, I think that's when I really realized, like, yo, this is possible. And I'm so happy for him. Um, you know, him and his family. You know, I've known Russ since we were in high school. So it's a blessed man. You just got to keep going, keep pushing, and we keep collecting wins, and uh, the rest will take care of itself. I'm just curious to get your perspective. What what would you say is kind of the number one or, or maybe two leading reasons for this turnaround you guys have had over the last month? Um, you know, I think having everybody healthy and um, having consistency on that. You know, we most of the games we're having almost everybody. Uh, we don't have games that. <clears throat> three or four guys are missing out and they kill our rhythm, they kill our, our winning streak or whatever. Um, I think that's one of the reasons. Um, and definitely Russ and Brett, you know, they're in an amazing stretch playing well every game and being huge for us. Um, I think that showed 
that their leadership is important and not only talking or are doing what they do, but playing well for us. I think uh, it's been huge. I would say those two things if I have to, uh, to say only two, but there is a bunch of things, you know, like our focus or mentality or uh, being ready to play. Everybody that, that, that play the game will get AG, haven't played a whole season and, and come out in three, four games. It's huge for us, you know, like Chandler, haven't played a bunch of games, come out and play well. So I think that there's so many things it's hard to say one or two things only. And you've, you're obviously starting in a three guard lineup now, but you've been part of a lot of three guard lineups this year, even when you were coming off the bench, what is that like for you defensively when you're, when you're on the floor with two other guards, sometimes really small guards and, and, and you might be matched up with, you know, other teams that have some big wings out there. Uh, you know, I like the, the challenge. Uh, I like when they try to pick me on, on the post, um, we have a, a, a team defense that helped me get in front of my guy and kind of like make them scramble and not give them a one-on-one -on -one position to play against me. So uh, I don't think it has been an issue. I don't know what the numbers say, but I, I don't think it has been an issue if I have to guard somebody else bigger than me or switch and get on the post with the four. I don't think that uh, has hurt us in, uh, in when I'm on that three point guard position. You. Hey, Owl. Uh, when you first signed with the team, you know, Tommy raved about you seeing you play for the Brazilian national team, you know, what you brought to the team. Do you feel like, you know, one year deal, you've, you're getting the opportunity finally to really prove to the rest of the NBA what you're capable of? I think so. Uh, I try not really think about the contract situation and all that. I think this is something that if I keep working, I keep doing my job. Uh, it's going to take care of itself, but uh, it's nice to just have the opportunity, you know. Uh, I'm, do I'm doing what I love. Um, this league is tough. This league is hard when you're in situations that you don't pay play as much as you want to. You don't have the opportunity to show what you're capable of. You put so much work on. You sacrifice so many things to be here, and, and, uh, and it's not only about the money or the contract, you know. It's about proving yourself and the legacy that you uh, – um, you're creating for yourself. And uh, I think that's what I focus on, you know, just being ready. Um, I'm so happy and glad that um, Washington and the Wizards gave me the opportunity. And um, I'm just enjoying the journey. I'm just enjoying uh, this team. Um, we never know what's going to happen today or tomorrow, but I'm just enjoying this, this season and playing and taking care of my body. And I think that's what every athlete wants to do, you know, be part of something and feel important and, and get the opportunity to show uh, your work. So I'm enjoying it and I'm happy. Thanks, Hall. Zach? Yeah, well, your answer might be similar to what you just said, but you mentioned like AG and Hutch who haven't played a ton uh, recently getting a chance. How cool has it been uh, to be a part of a team that, you know, guys seem to just step up every night. You never know who's going to uh, show up besides the backcourt, obviously. It's nice. And uh, I've said them too, but Bonga has been there. You know, other guys, even Cash has been there uh, after the team got COVID and not a lot of people were playing. You know, he came in, he was ready to play. Uh, I could go and name everybody on the team. You know, everybody has had their, their opportunity and uh, has proven that they're working, you know, they're not taking day off every day. They're, on the, they're in the gym working out and um, it's nice, you know, and it's nice to feel the support that everybody has to each other. And, and if you see the energy on the bench at the end of the game, how Russ and, and, and Brad and DB and everybody that uh, usually play a lot of minutes, how happy they are for those guys when they get their opportunity and they play well. So uh, it's nice. The energy is nice and, and winning games also helps, you know, and um, like I said, we are all enjoying the journey and, and but we can't forget the position we are and um, that we still got, got work to do. Oscar Robertson did an interview the other day where he talked about you a lot and said a lot of very complimentary things amongst which he said he thinks you're going to pass him and he said when you do, he'll be very happy about it because you're a tremendous player and tremendous athlete. And I'm just wondering what that means to you when guys of his ilk with his kind of standing in the history of the game 
say those uh, kind of things about you. I think, um, for one, you always, um, you in this position, um, when you get mentioned with greats like Oscar, I mean, not just that, but they compliment things you do for the game. It's uh, truly an honor, man. It's something that, honestly, I don't take for granted uh, because Oscar is somebody that did more for the game, um, played in the era where um, it was tough being an African-American athlete um, and in our game, and he understood and sacrificed so many things to be able to play the game. And I understand that. And to me, I'm just grateful to be able to be in a conversation on, uh, you know, with his name connected, uh, my name connected to his. So um, I'm grateful for his, you know, thoughtful words and, you know. Zach. Russ, for this team to get contributions uh, from guys like Hutch and Anthony Gill, I mean, not just once during the season, like multiple times during this stretch, just how fun has it been to be with this team and see everyone grow and, and be able to, to showcase themselves and how much better they've gotten? Man, it's amazing, man. It's, it's so, so much fun for me, honestly, to see uh, guys um, do well, man. It's an unbelievable thing to see guys do well. And, and when they collectively a team do well, you know, everybody, everybody eats. And I know, uh, you know, winning people want to, do different things personally, but as a team collectively playing together and cheering the next person on, next person on, next man up, um, it's been unbelievable, especially the right time of year. So I'm just happy you guys put in the work and uh, be able to kind of see it come to life. Ava. Russ, kind of on that note, um, you've talked about how important, obviously, leadership is to you and all of that, but you need the other side to kind of be willing to learn the team that you're coming into in the organization. I don't know if surprised is the right word, but are, I guess, are you pleasantly surprised that this entire organization and team was kind of willing to go along for the ride or, or soak up all of that stuff too? Oh, no, I mean, I, I came here with um, a clear mind, a new start um, and a clean slate. And I wanted to make sure that I, I was able to kind of make my imprint, especially being a leader and, and, and leading by example. And guys here have been very open to you know, how I lead is not always the, the, the nicest way and not always the, the quietest way, but uh, my intentions are in the right in the right state of mind. And I, and I know that and I explain that to the guys on our team. And, um, you know, they've been doing an amazing job of kind of letting me be me, um, which I don't take for granted. I'm very appreciative of all of everybody in this locker room. And, you know, I wouldn't, you know, change anybody in this locker room for, for anyone. So I'm just grateful and happy to see all of them do well as well. Yeah. Hey, Russ, unlike this week when you guys have two sets of back-to-backs in different cities, this season, because of the condensed schedule and trying to fit games in, you guys have had a lot of back-to-backs in the same city, D.C., L.A., or you guys have had a week in New York, Miami. Do you like that, and would you like to see that more going forward in future seasons? Uh, I prefer not to be playing back-to-back, but <laughs> it was up to me. But, um you know, I think it's it's good. I mean, I think as the season opened up, I would prefer give us more time and days in between to give a little more rest when we play games. Um, so if that's staying in the place longer than sure, if it's not just going back home, then I'm okay with that too. Uh, 